In this video, we're going to generate Excel spreadsheets with Java. We're going to use Maven, the Apache POI library. We're going to generate an XLS spreadsheet, and we're going to save it in our project very simply. So we're not going to put it somewhere else, and we're not going to return it as an endpoint. This is the sheet that we're going to generate. So if you notice at the top, we named it products. We have a header row with name, description, price, in stock, and quantity. We changed the background to gray. We centered the text in the column and bolded it. We then have a list of products. Notice the description text is wrapped. And then we have a special case where if the quantity is zero, that means in stock is false, and we went ahead and merged these cells. So I'll show you how to do that as well. And we're also going to name our sheet, My Product Sheet. I'm using IntelliJ, so go ahead and create a new project and give it a name. I'm using Maven as my build system, and I am using Java 17, but this library will work all the way back to Java 8. Once you've created your project, go over to your palm.xml file, if you're using Maven, and add this dependency, org.apache.poi. We will have to add another dependency later, but we'll come back to that. We do have a print line statement with our project. I'm going to go ahead and click Run to make sure it's working. Let's start off by creating a class. I'm going to name it Excel Spreadsheet Generator. And I'm going to give it a private constructor. It's going to have one method, public static void execute. And then in my main method, I'm going to call the class and then the method. And now we are done with our main method. The rest of the code is going to live in our Excel spreadsheet generator. So we're going to start off with workbook workbook equals new XSSF workbook. This will generate an XLSX file. Then we want to create a new sheet. Sheet sheet is equal to workbook.createSheet. And this is where you give the name for the sheet. We're going to call it My Product Sheet. Next, we need to actually write the file. So file output stream is equal to new file output stream. And this is where we name our file. So products.xlsx. Then we need to call workbook.write and pass in the file output stream. And then workbook.close. And these are underlined in red. That's because they need to be wrapped in a try catch. So go ahead and do that. And we'll just catch an IO exception. Workbook.write writes the file and saves it. Workbook.close closes the file so other people can access it. If you go ahead and click Run, you'll get this error because it is expecting a logger in the implementation. So make your way back to your palm.xml file and paste in this dependency for logging. And if you run it again, it will be successful. And if you come up here, you'll see the XLSX spreadsheet that was generated. Go ahead and open it, and there you go. You can see at the bottom left, we have my product sheet that we passed in. Okay, so I'm going to clean up as we go because this code is going to become very messy very quickly. So I'm going to delete all of my comments. And then I'm going to right click on the try catch, come down here to refactor, and click extract method. I'm then going to name the method write file. This is how we're going to keep track of this as we go along. Every time we finish a block of code, we'll abstract it and put it in its own method. 
Okay, next up, let's focus on our header row. So row, header row, is equal to sheet dot create row. And then you pass in the index that you want to create. So zero is the index of the first row. I'm then going to have a string array of headers where I pass in name, description, price, in stock, and quantity. You can copy this from the description. Then create a simple for loop, int i is equal to zero, i is less than headers.length, i plus plus. Then we need to create a cell. So cell cell is equal to header row dot create cell, and then we pass an i. So what we're doing with this for loop is we're looping horizontally across the sheet for every column. Then call cell dot set cell value and pass in headers at the index we're at. Okay, go ahead and click Run, which will regenerate the sheet and replace the one that we've already generated. We can see we now have name, description, price, in stock, and quantity in the first row. Now let's add some style. So cell dot set cell style, and then we're going to create a method called get cell style, where we pass in the workbook hover, and click Create Method. So now we're going to use cell style, header style, is equal to workbook.createCellStyle. Then create a font, font, bold font, is equal to workbook.createFont. and then call bold font dot set bold to true. This makes the font bold. Then you have to call header style dot set font to the font we just created. Then we'll call header style dot set fill foreground color to index colors dot gray underscore 25 underscore percent dot get index. And then header style dot set fill pattern to fill pattern type dot solid underscore foreground. And then header style dot set alignment to horizontal alignment dot center. As you can guess, these two lines sets the cell to a gray background. and this line horizontally aligns the text. At the end, make sure to return header style. Go ahead and click Run again, and now we have some better styling. That being said, we do need to make these columns wider. Go ahead and clean up a little bit. And I'm going to highlight this code, refactor, extract method, and I'll call it generate header row. I'm going to call a method called set column widths, where we pass in the sheet. And then if you hover, click create method. To set the column widths, it's pretty simple. Just call sheet dot set column width, pass in the index, and then 5,000 units. And then we need to do this for each column. Column at index 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. If I regenerate the Excel spreadsheet, we now have nice evenly spaced columns. Of course, in a production system, you would likely abstract this with a for loop or dynamically generate the values. I'm going to clean up again.
Okay, our header row is now done. Now we need to generate a list of products. So create a new Java class called product and create these fields, name, description, price, in stock, and quantity. At this point, you can use Java Lombok to automatically generate your getter, setters, and constructor. I'm just gonna do it manually to keep it simple. So I have an all arguments constructor, and I generate all of the getters and all of the setters. When you're done with that, create a new class called product list generator with a private constructor. And it's gonna have one public method, public static list of products called get. And you can copy this code from the description. All it does is return a list of products. Okay, list of products, products is equal to product list generator dot get. And then we're going to have a for loop that starts at zero and goes up to products.size. And then we're going to start with row, row is equal to sheet.createRow. And we pass in the index. And actually I'm gonna change this to one because we actually need to start on the next row because the first row is our header row. So row.createCell at index zero and then we do dot set cell value products dot get at the index we're at dot get name. We're gonna do the exact same thing at the next index, but instead we get description. Same thing at the next index, but get price. And then we keep going until we've completed each field. Once you're done with that, go ahead and regenerate your spreadsheet. And as you can see, it is looped through each product and put each one on a new row. I'm gonna go ahead and extract this again into a method called add products. Next up, we want to wrap the text for the description. So this is where we set the description. Let's go ahead and space this out so we can focus. Create a new line of code, cell description cell is equal to row.create cell at index one. This is going to replace part of line 42. Let's create a new cell style, cell style of wrap text style is equal to workbook.create cell style and I've realized that we never passed in the workbook. So go up to your method and pass in workbook, workbook. And then we also need to pass in workbook to our add products method. Then call wrap text style dot set wrap text to true. And then we're gonna call description cell dot set cell style to the wrap text style. Go ahead and regenerate, and we can see that the text is now wrapped for that column. And the last thing we want to do is, if in stock is false, we want to go ahead and merge these two cells. So again, do some cleanup, and then take this block of code and abstract it. I'm gonna call it set description and wrap text. Okay, these are the next two cells we care about. So if in stock is equal to true, we want to merge these two cells together and we'll put some custom message. First off, we need to reference the cell again. So cell is in stock cell is equal to row.create cell at index three, and this is going to replace part of line 52. Do the same thing below, 
cell quantity cell is equal to row dot create cell at index four and then replace part of line 55. Next do a check to see if the product is not in stock. Then we're going to call sheet dot add merge regions and then we need to create a new cell range address. And we pass in row dot get row num row dot get row num and these first two, this is your start row and end row. They're the same thing for us because we're not merging rows, we're merging columns. This is where you would merge vertically. Then we pass in three and four, which matches up to these two, three and four. This is the start and end column. This is where you would merge horizontally, which is what we're doing. I'm gonna do one more thing, I'm gonna say, is in stock cell dot set cell value to out of stock. Now notice on line 53, we are setting it to the Boolean of true or false. So we're overriding this value if not in stock. This is not necessarily the most efficient, but for our purposes, it's fine. Just make sure to understand how it works and know what you're doing. Go ahead and regenerate your file. And you can see that these two cells have been merged. Now it would be nice if this was centered, but I'm gonna leave that as an exercise for you. You should be able to do this by now. And of course, I'm gonna go ahead and delete my comments and clean this up a bit. And then I'm gonna take this block of code and also abstract it into its own method called set in stock and quantity. Okay, so this code is okay. I'd give it a C++. We could add better abstractions and be more consistent, so let's just talk about a few things we could do to make it better. So this is just a raw string. We could abstract this into an enum. If you notice down here, we kind of have different design patterns. So we have row.createCell and we just directly start working on it. Whereas on the other one, we have a method call. So in a production system, we would probably abstract lines 32 and 34 into their own method calls, even if they're only dealing with one row, just to make it more readable and more consistent. Also, you should probably use an in-stream instead of a regular for loop. It's just easier to write and there's one less line of code. I did a regular for loop just to keep it simple. Down here, this would probably be a list of enums, or you could even be really fancy and use Java Reflection. I just did a raw string array. Again, just keep it simple. Again, this should probably be an int stream instead of a raw for loop. But other than that, it's okay. Okay, that's all I have for you. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I also have a Patreon. I would like to do this full time. And if you have any questions on the video, please comment. I reply to every single one. Good luck creating your own Excel spreadsheet.